Are you looking to create financial freedom you just don't know where to start? Maybe you heard about real estate investing and it sounds great and you know it creates generational wealth, but you just don't know how to really start that process. I wanna be able to help you with that today. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Today's video is how to underwrite your first real estate deal towards financial freedom. All right, guys, so we're going to jump into talking about single family homes. And if you ever read anything around single family home investing, it's SFH, single family home. And so you're, the first thing you want to do is you have to identify which state and which city you want to invest in. And there's a couple things that I'd like to point out that you want to look at when investing in some of these places. And I'm just going to pull up some of the things there. Factors to really consider. Number one is rent growth, right? Is is rent growing there? Um, the vacancy rate, right? Um, how often the property is sitting there and how often throughout the year it is not being occupied by a tenant. Um, your cash flow forecast, the potential returns. These are all things you want to look. Growing population, job growth, are new companies going there? Are they leaving? Are people coming? Are they going? These are just a couple things that you may want to start to look at as you start to invest. Your number one goal, and you can read all around on this, your number one goal is to pick a state that is a landlord-friendly state. Just Google landlord-friendly states. In fact, we can put a list up here for you. As you see, the reason why that's important is because if you need to evict a client, someone that's not paying you money, to live in your property, you want to be able to get them out quick. I know in California, some people, it takes them a year plus just to get someone out of their property to get a new tenant in that will pay. And we'll talk about some of that, you know, how do you avoid that? But your number one step is identify the city you want. Step two really is identifying the property. What kind of property do you want? What are the square footage, number of bedrooms, bathrooms? Is it a 3-2 or a 2-1? Um, if you ever hear those numbers, what that truly means is the number of bedrooms and the number of bathrooms. Square footage is important too. And so you want to identify typically three bedrooms, two baths work well. Because if you are a single person, you could rent out the property or you could house hack it. And house hack it is basically you rent out each room and the rooms, the rent you collect actually pay the mortgage for you, if not cash flow. I have a couple clients have done that. Great stuff. Um, I even did a little form of that when I was renting. It was weird. I was in charge of the house, but I didn't own the house. But anyway, uh, with that being said, in a typical family, they like a three bedroom, two bath, especially families that are just starting out, right? Like they just had a child or maybe they're on their second one or they work from home. That's a great fit too. So, but typically three twos, are the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The most generous properties that you can buy that are looking to be rented out, especially if you have one bathroom, that's not appealing to people. If you got two people that need to go in the morning, think about it, how mad would you be, right? So step two is identify how many square feet. Is it by places that you would wanna go if you were renting there, like um, like a, a food store, uh, a Walmart or, you know, different activities that would be fun and the necessities. Do you have access to them? Highways, if you got to drive to work, right? People driving to work or downtown, how close you want to be, how far. Once you've identified, hey, I want a 3-2, 15 to 1800 square foot feet in this city, in this state, now you can start going to work. Now you can go on the MLS and identify properties, go on Zillow, all that good stuff. You could do all of that. But the best deals are what we call off-market deals where you're marketing to people. You could buy lists, you could put up bandit signs, and if you do that, they can work. But I will say this, don't ever put your phone number on the bandit sign, put a Google voice number on there so that you don't get in trouble. But bandit signs are okay, mailers are a great way. And then even people who are out and about, I always tell clients, Mailmen are great. Um, here, he and air conditioned technicians, um, uh, water heater people, technicians, right? Like all these people that are in and out of homes, they could identify if you build a relationship with them and a referral program, they might be able to find you a deal by just talking to the homeowners. Like, hey, uh, project's all done. You know, are you trying to sell the place? Or are you just fixing it up? What are you doing? And now they could start to gear the conversation. And if you're like, hey, I'll give you $1,000 if I close on a house that you bring to me, they're gonna be like, cool just by talking to the homeowner. So you gotta start identifying properties mostly off market. 
Now, can you find some good deals on the market on MLS and, and really say, okay, I wanna invest in this property? Well, here's the thing. You're probably gonna look at properties that are anywhere from 60 to 90 to 120 days old on the listings because something might be wrong or they might just wanna get out of it and they're willing to take a discount. When you do that, this is the big shift. I, I share it from stage, I share it in masterminds, I share it with clients is, you, whatever the listing price is, that isn't the price that you're trying to make your numbers fit into. You wanna make an offer based on what it is that your numbers need to be, right? Like, does that make sense? Your numbers need to be X, Y, Z. Like, for example, if I'm investing in a single family home, I need to be cash flowing $600 a month after all expenses. Okay, for me to be able to move forward. If it's like 300, not a big deal for me. I don't want it, maybe for someone else, right? Not something I want as an investment property, okay? So you can look on Zillow, you can look on the MLS for these deals, um, but they're better off market, especially people who need to get out and get out quickly. All right, so you've identified the city, you identified the property, you're starting to look for deals, maybe you're doing off market, you're talking to people that are in and out of homes all the time and you're, you've are you got a deal, right? Now the most traditional way that people start out is they actually go to a bank and get a loan. Now are there other ways, hard money, uh, seller financing, absolutely. But I'm just talking about you that are watching today, you have a high paying job or you have a business and you're looking to create financial freedom, where do you start? If you own a home, that's awesome. But I wanna share with you where you could start to kind of start the process of running numbers and it's really not that difficult. So here we go, we're gonna jump into my iPad which is a new way of doing business for me. So this is pretty cool if you guys have been watching for a little bit, um, we're going more into all of this. So, <clears throat> all right, let's look at this. There are mortgage calculators, there are business people out there that you know they give you their free Excel spreadsheet on how to punch all the numbers in. But if you don't have that, I have one right in front of me on my computer. But if you don't have it, you can just go to a simple mortgage calculator, okay? So for example, if I saw a property that was 425,000, I would typically have to put down 20%. Some banks even want you to have 25% down, okay? And you need to qualify, your debt to income ratio has to qualify for the property, okay? So as the business owner you are, Here's the numbers. We're just gonna play with this little calculation here. You put in your zip code. The interest rate, it's gonna change, but you know what's the national average? Roughly 7%. So we're just gonna use that. All loan terms are usually 30 years, unless you have a personal preference. <clears throat> Depending on your goals, you might shift that. Maybe you do 15 year, right? But it's gotta work for your numbers. <clears throat> Cut that part, Paul. You have to know what your outcome is. If you're looking to cash flow to get out of your job or your business and you're looking to build cash flow quickly or to a certain number, then you honestly want to take out 30 year loans. You don't want a 15 year loan. It doesn't make sense. But if you're like, hey, I'm gonna work for the next 15 years and at 15 years, I wanna be out of everything and I wanna have cash flow coming in, then it might make sense to almost break even on a monthly basis when you're renting out to a tenant um, if you did a 15 year loan, but we're gonna keep it at 30. So you can see here, we got principal and interest at uh, 2266. You wanna get updated on your property taxes. Talk to an agent um, you know, around you, someone that might be in your network. Say, hey, if I buy the property at 425, order taxes, what's the recorded at currently? Homeowners insurance, always encourage it. I just had a client of mine, his commercial building right next to him, The it was like storage and stuff. Um, it burnt down and there was two classic cars. One place had a ton of expensive tools, no runner's insurance. They lost everything. Nothing you can do about it, no runner's insurance. I know we're talking about owning a home, homeowner's insurance, always a must, especially if you're taking out a loan, you cannot get away with it. Um, <clears throat> you're probably not gonna have PMI, okay, right here. You're not gonna have PMI only because you're putting down 20% or more. Um, and if you're using a VA home loan, you can get away without with putting less down if you're house hacking, but you're not gonna have PMI. That's 
a benefit of having a VA home loan. So when I bought my house, I didn't even put any money down. How cool is that? And then I actually got money at closing and I didn't have PMI. So hoorah to the Marine Corps. So thank you. Um, I would recommend if you're going to rent out your home, don't you don't do it in an HOA community. Yes, there's great amenities. Can you make money? Sure. But I like to stay away from it because like in my HOA, you can't have anyone rent your home, short term rental, mid term rental, you can't do it. The only thing is a long term rental and it has to be a year or longer lease. And so it just doesn't make sense for me. Again, can the numbers work? Yes. <clears throat> so Let's say you identify this property for four hundred twenty-five thousand. Your monthly debt is twenty-six twelve. So here we go. We're gonna play with this a little bit. So twenty-six twelve. Now, what most people don't factor in is capital X budget, right? So basically, your roof's gonna go bad eventually. Your water heaters, your air conditioner, these high-ticket items. And so that are going to cost you thousands of dollars. And so you want to start putting away for it now. So typically we say 5%. So if of the rent, so if or you're dead, whatever that is. So right now, 5% of that of 2612. Yep. Sorry, just doing the math here. Is it $130? I typically say around 5%. Okay, so bear with me guys. So you guys can see this is basically 5% right there. Plus, you're like, plus there's more debt? Yeah, also maintenance budget, right? If you're, are you gonna shovel the snow? Are you going to cut the grass? Are you gonna change the air filters? Are you going to make sure the property's good to go? If anything happens, uh, toilet breaks, you gotta come. I typically, again, put 5% here. So that's another $130 and I'm rounding. There's change. So if you're following my math, I get it. Plus, again, more. Yes. If you're going to create financial freedom, you want to make sure that you're not having to do that. And typically what we're seeing for property management is anywhere from 8 to 12 percent. Right. So I'm going to go 10 percent right in the middle here. So we're going to say 10 percent is two hundred and sixty one dollars and we're going to add this all up to sixty one plus twenty six twelve you're looking at total debt let's see if we can get this around here you're to run this property where you don't have to touch it we're just going to round up is three thousand one hundred and thirty five dollars and that means you don't have to do a thing. The property manager will find the tenants, they will qualify them. A good property manager is worth the money. Now you could say, I'm not gonna take off, I'm not gonna do CapEx, right? I, I don't care, the roof's good, water heaters are good, they're only a couple of years old, right? You could say, hey, the maintenance, I live by it, I'm gonna do it myself right here. And you know what, I'm gonna manage the property. So we're gonna cut this one, this one and that one. So we're looking at times two, <clears throat> $520 back into your pocket if you wanted to. So I'm gonna put that right here. If you wanted to, $520 back into your pocket, subtract this 520 and you're gonna come up with, and I know I'm just playing numbers here, 2615, okay? so. This is the number though that we're gonna go with right here. Now, you might be sitting there and say, okay, Joe, I know how much it's gonna cost to, um, to run this property with debt service, maintenance, CapEx, but how do I tell about rent? If I'm gonna have a long-term renter in there that's qualified and can make the payments, which your property manager should do for you, you don't need to become an expert. There's a lot of tools and podcasts out there you can listen to. There's two sites I recommend. Number one is Rentometer, okay? You can type in the address. I would say wherever you're looking to invest, make sure you buy the premium version for it so that you can jump in and get the most accurate data. You could also go to Big Bird Pockets. Here's a membership. There is a rental software right here 39 bucks a month if you want to right at the top here manage rental properties you could do that there's lease agreements right run rent and rehab estimated reports they are comprehensive you could do this for 40 bucks a month and cancel it 
right? For $40, you can get all of this. I recommend it. I don't get any money for this, just recommending this. So I'm telling you, these are some great tools to check out your rent, okay? So let's go back to our numbers. <clears throat> so this is our debt right here, this 3135. Now let's say you can get for rent, so you have debt, let me put D for debt, 31, 35, but you can get for rent, you can get rent for, and it should be the other way around, but we're just gonna say $3,550. You got it from Rent-A-Meter, you got it from Bigger Pockets, you talk to agents, you can do all of that, right? So if we were to do 3550, minus 3135 you're going to get cash flow of $415 a month now you might sit there and say hey let me back up the one thing i didn't factor in is vacancy right and i keep that if i'm going to go exaggerate i'm going to say 10% maybe for that at most um, I'm going to factor that in, but I didn't in factor in va vacancy. That's a, a whole nother thing. You can do that. You can work with someone, but I wanted to keep it simple today. So let's get back. This is your cash flow right here. So is $415 worth it? If you got to put down $85,000 to make 415, is that really worth it to you? Because if you divide $85,000 divided by 415, that's 204 months or 17 years before you make your $85,000 back in cash flow. So I get your mortgage is getting paid down. We'll talk about that here in a minute. I told you I don't like to do anything unless we're making six, roughly $600. I'm going to say plus or minus $600 in cash flow. So for me, this deal wouldn't work if I'm putting down $85,000. Um, even $600 is probably not where I want to be. Um, with that. And so I would probably want to be around 10% of my down payment. So I would want to be, um, or excuse me, 1%. I would probably want to be around 850 in this deal. So it would be around 850 in cash flow I would need to make to say yes to this deal. However, you can always come back and say, well, Joe, this $520, if I manage it myself, I don't, I do all the maintenance myself and I don't save for CapEx expenses, you just add 415 plus 520 and you will be able to have an additional cash flow of 900, a uh, total, excuse me, let's do this, $935 of cash flow. So now you got to ask yourself, okay, for your time, and your effort, you're gonna learn tenants, but you're not gonna have freedom. You could get $935. If it's you know around the corner from you, this might work. If you can pay someone 20 bucks to shovel the snow and cut the grass for you, you might come out of pocket a little bit, you know, 50 bucks a month or something like that on average, and you might be able to get away managing on your own, making 850 or 900 bucks, roughly around there. And you might say, you know what, this deal's worth it for me. As a business owner, or someone has a high paying job, you don't have time to do all this, you know, you may want to factor in that, hey, if I can get close to $500 a month in cash flow, that starts to move me closer to my financial freedom number, right? For me, I wouldn't do it for 415. Um, if it was next door to me or like around the corner from me, for almost $1,000 a month in cash flow, I would just, there's websites that when you sign people up, you know, the, the lease your home, you have a contract, you get it all done legally, they have to submit payments online. And then if they're late, you can evict them quickly. You wanna know all that and you wanna do all that, great. Most business owners, they don't have the time, but if this was around the corner for me and I was gonna make $1,000 a month in cash flow, you bet I'd do that. If the if house was only a year or two old, I would totally, you know, I, w I wouldn't worry right so much about capex and saving up on that. Um, in my psychology, if I'm cash flowing and I'm just storing that cash flow in the bank, I'm basically saving for capex. I am saving 10% on managing it myself by setting up a website, making sure that they pay. And if they have any questions, I just you know something happens, call a plumber, call an electrician, something like that. 
Um, always recommend a deposit of one to two months uh, as a down deposit for qualified people. But look, here's the thing. If you were getting, if you manage this yourself, all right, it doesn't always take a lot. Short-term rentals are a little bit more than long-term rentals. But if you were getting close to $1,000 a month in cash flow because you manage it, you found a good deal, how much do you need in passive income right here to become financially free? If you're looking at, hey, I need you know $5,000 a month, or you're like, I don't even know. You got to go look and say, what are all your bills come out to? Your bills, the must-haves. Not like, you know, you need Hulu or, you know, Netflix. You can cancel those, but your mortgage, your um, your car payments, your gas, your food, your utilities, your cell phone, just the bare minimums. And if you say that that's 5000 a month, right, you need $5,000 a month coming in to cover your life expenses, you only need to do this five times, right? You find five properties. That could be one a year. That could be one every um, six months. And in two and a half years, you could be technically financially free. Now you gotta imagine if we use the same example five times, that's $85,000 per property. There, that's $425,000 that you're going to put out of your own pocket. But if you're you're making a lot of money, you're doing this over a course of time, you can save up quickly, you can literally have all your bills covered right here in two and a half years. Or if you did one a year in the next five years, right? You would have a five-year plan to become financially free. This is your bare minimum number. Now your lifestyle number, that's going to increase. Okay, that's going to go up. That's, you know, you go into the movies going out. You might add an extra, you know, 2,500, three grand to it. So now you're really, let's add 3K to it. You're now at $8,000 to have your lifestyle and be financially free. That's actually now eight homes, eight single family homes that you run for $8,000 a month. You are financially free. Your job is really to make sure on the first of each month you're collecting payment. And if anyone calls for a broken toilet or something like that, that you actually handle it. All right, so underwriting is pretty simple. When you know roughly how much are you going to spend, and the banks can help you when you go into underwriting, but they're going to want to know you have a house under contract. But this is to identify, am I in the right range? So you have, let's go back really quickly. Let me pull this back up. You have calculators that you could go online and play with. You could see what the rates are. You can do your homework on property taxes and homeowners insurance. Here, you have to be careful around homeowners insurance. What people are paying is not the new rates because with all the disasters that have been going on, you know, and Florida got bombarded, insurance prices gone up across the country to make up for the losses in some of these states that took a hard hit over the last couple of years. So you may want to look at it. I looked at a deal I factored in for two properties we were looking to buy as a package deal. I was factoring in about $7,000 for insurance annually. It was actually $16,000. I was blown away. So my numbers had to adjust. So let me back up and say this. There are things out there like DSCR loans. There are, you can do hard money, which I wouldn't recommend to get in with hard money. They're a lot higher than banks. But if you're in the beginning stages, this is the best spot for you to start learning how to underwrite your deals, to really not take too much time. As long as you have accurate info and data on taxes, insurance, the rate in which banks, I always kind of, I like to go a little bit above what I would, what I think it is. And this way, when it comes back from the bank, instead of 7%, they're like, oh, we can get you at 6.75%. I'm like, I just won. I made more cash flow. You have to do your due diligence. Don't be afraid to talk to banks. Don't be afraid to talk to real estate agents. Don't be afraid to talk to other investors. But you want to start to look and identify properties that you can get in on to start buying into the market. We don't know when what's going to happen in the market. We have people that predict it going up, going down, you know, whatever it is. But if you can buy right, 
And I'm here to tell you, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what you need, what you need to do. I'm just giving you recommendations on what I would do. So you can't sue me for any of this. But what I would do is with this, I would start to look at properties that I can get at a discount. And I don't want to get into flipping and rehabbing and uh, refinancing. I just want to keep it simple today. We'll get into that. We'll get people in on the millionaire series that we have that does all this and breaks it all down for you. It's going to be great. But I want to keep it simple. You can be able to see a path towards financial freedom. If you literally look back at this and you say, if I can manage it myself, would I manage eight properties to make $8,000 a month? And all I have to do is collect rent and call if call a plumber or electrician and make sure maintenance people show up, right? People, kids cutting lawn, shoveling snow, things like that. Is it worth it to you? Or is that 60 hour week business you got going on, is that more important? And so you gotta ask yourself, what's more important? This is a simple plan towards financial freedom. I'm helping people do it right now, taking the smallest and most simplest steps. You can jump in big, you can go multifamily, apartment complexes, commercial buildings, triple net leases. The game and the rules change compared to a single family home. Now I'm more about going bigger, faster, but today's video is about making it simple for you. So just understand you can start small and you can go big. All right guys, so I hope that helps break it down. What we're gonna do in the show notes is we're gonna make sure that we find a calculator online that you can use just like we did here at Bankrate um, so that you can be able to take something and just click up a button, add it to your you know Safari or web page, and you can be able to have that up when you go to look at deals and everything like that. Remember, just because they're asking 425 doesn't mean that that's the price you get. You might say, well, hey, based on I, I'm looking at pictures and some of the things aren't just making sense. I might have to put some money into it. I'm going to offer you 395. Run those numbers. It might boost your cash flow. It's going to bump it up a couple, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks, right? You'll see a difference in that. Um, not a huge difference but it'll give you more money back in your pocket. More money's better than less, right? So anyway, today's video is to help you with that. Now, if you found value of it, in it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button so when more videos come out, we got some really powerful interviews coming. Comment below, let me know what you think. It's basic, it's very simple. This was a simple video. We didn't go into great details or go into bigger deals. We will in the future around that, but I wanted to give you a simple process because I've coached people who are very successful in business. They want to become financially free. They don't know where to start and we wanted to keep it simple for them so they're not stressed or overwhelmed and hopefully I communicated that to you today. But I wanted you to see a map on what it would take to start the path of financial freedom. So thanks for watching. Comment below, subscribe, share this video. If you have any questions, let us know below. We'll get back to you when we see the question come in. Other than that, thanks for tuning in, guys. My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. 